Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. Tony Shiloh is back with us again today, but it's actually kind of special because she's here to talk with us about her brand new release from Bethany House, In Search of a Prince. Thanks for joining us and congratulations, Tony. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you guys again. <laughs> Reading the back cover copy, which we can all go find on Amazon um, <laughs> or wherever your preferred <laughs> retailer of books happens to be. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book in your own words, Tony? Ooh, good question. And what I should have known was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so I like to say that this is sort of like the Prince of Diaries with a coming to America type twist, but in reverse. Okay. Um, Brielle Adebayo finds out that she's a princess, that her grandfather, the king, unfortunately, is dying, and she's basically needed to step into his shoes. Of course, you know, there's little plot twists along the way, so she finds out they just won't let her accept the position of future queen without getting him married. So I did throw in the marriage and convenience trope in because all the tales. Because why not? <laughs> why not? Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Um, that's that's very cool. It's funny because um, I had seen in your library journal review, they mentioned the Princess Diaries. And I have never actually seen the Princess Diaries. Um, they're, yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody can shake their head in sadness that I've never seen the Princess Diaries. Or me, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie also probably has not because they're movies, but were they, they might have been books first. I don't know. Um, I know nothing <laughs> about the Princess Diaries. Was that intentional? Was that sort of part of the inspiration for you? Or did that just sort of come apart, come about afterwards? No, that was completely unintentional. It's okay. so funny <laughs> that, um, because I've seen it a lot um, in people um, making comments about it. And it was so funny because when I told my husband the idea, he's like, so the princess diaries. And I was like, well, uh, I was like, no. <laughs> he's like, yes. And I was like, no. <laughs> and how does he know? This is my uh, question. <laughs> he's seen he's seen the princess diaries. But you have boys. Why has your husband seen the princess diaries? I'm a girl. That's so true. No, oh, that's I true. You watch movies. Whatever. <laughs> blah blah. <laughs> all right. So you watched the princess diaries and you made him watch it with you. All right. All right. Very good. Well, I, you know, it's okay that it was or was not inspiration for the story. I was just wondering, because, because a lot of people have said that, but I love that you added the coming to America twist, because until you said that, I would never have come up with that, but you're absolutely right. And it makes me love the story just a little bit more, you're probably awesome. because I love coming to America. It's so hilarious. So um, that's super fun. <laughs> uh, so you're talking about another movie. Another I thought movie. you meant like coming to America. You well, know, I do like... also, yeah, I do enjoy being in America, but uh, the movie coming to America, it's Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. yeah the Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Look hilarious. at the Aussie get it right. Yeah, well, <laughs> and Mirella... Meg Cabot wrote The Princess Diaries. I know that. <laughs> it's just you, I'm, Valerie. I'm you can, you reasonably watch... well read. You need to start Florida. watching movies. Watch some movies. Maybe. I'll give you a list. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but I don't remember the movie. I watched it. Um, did it come out like 20 years ago? It's, oh, yeah, it's a while ago, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I would think I probably watched it when my kids were very young. And so a lot has happened since then. So I don't have a massively good recollection of it other than it was cute. <laughs> okay. All I know about it is that Julie Andrews was in it. That's my sum total knowledge of The Princess Diaries. <laughs> So are we oh. just going to assume that all of our podcast listeners know all about it? Or does somebody want to give us a really quick rundown yeah. on what that actually means to Tony's story? Maybe Tony. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, Tony. <laughs> okay. So, and the Princess Diaries played by my mind just totally blanked, but um, my gosh, what is her name? Anne Hathaway. Thank you. <laughs> Anne Hathaway. <laughs> It was in Les Mis. But anyways, she um, is a teenager at the time and she finds out that she's a princess 
and her mother never told her. So, of course, she's shocked and outraged. And Julie Andrews is her grandmother, so three cheers for that. Um, ah. And she goes um, to the country, find out, you know, what she has to do to be the next princess. And, of course, they're... Um, I can't remember if I'm thinking of the second one, but one of the movies they want her to marry in order oh. to be the next reigning monarch. And she thinks now, that's okay. Now, having read this book, In Search of a Prince, uh, it does sound like there are some similarities. Um, I can see why people might be saying that. So in the movie, like in your book, are there lots of sort of funny things where she's learning protocol and, and that sort of thing? Um, Because I liked the fact that Brielle goes around actually visiting places in the country and learning about it and And talking um, to people, real people. Yeah, seeing, you know, where she would would feel like her focus should be when she is the reigning monarch, um, which is a good thing. (laughs) And um, I also really like that she started out going sort of incognito so that she could really get a, a good feel for it. I thought that was really fun. Yeah. Um, so not so that we don't make this into a Princess Diaries episode, because we do have <laughs> other questions to talk about. Uh, why don't we shift to Nural's topic, which is yes. not Princess Diaries related? <laughs> no. So um, I really love the African island, tropical island setting in the book. I just thought that was fabulous. But I've always been a big reader of international settings and um, trade travelling to places that you just can't go to in your real life. So the setting was just excellent as far as I was concerned. And particularly because most of the princess or the royalty romance type stories that I've seen have a European setting and it's sort of more like drawing on like Monaco in the Riviera type settings. Um, So my question is, what inspired you to write a princess story set in Africa? Um, Just basically what you said, like they're all in Europe and I wanted so much to have a black princess. Um, So I was basically trying to figure out like the best way I could do that. And obviously I thought Africa first, but I didn't know exactly like how easy or hard that would be um, until I started doing research. Um, Yeah, don't build your own country, it's exhausting. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever think about like trying to fit it into a corner between some other countries like inland or was the island always important? Yeah, it was definitely the island. I don't know why this came to me as an island. I didn't want it inland, mostly because I was thinking, um, other than Morocco, I couldn't think of an inland um, place that had monarch still. Um, Plus, I just, I don't know, I think it's probably because I've read a lot of Carol Mankato books, and they're always (laughs) in islands. So I was like, yes, let's go with islands. (laughs) Islands are good. Carol Carol mentioned when she came for the royal royalty romance episode um, that she specifically chose islands because it made it easier to build the world. You didn't have to worry so much about border conflicts and actually trying to redraw a map. It's like because you can drop an island anywhere and yes. and you're not you know messing up. No, that's you know that's where Ethiopia is. You can't put it there. And so you know I know what that border is. <laughs> Exactly. There's vast amount of ocean. Just drop them in there and voila. <laughs> nice. And, and yet where you chose, there are a few little islands in that area. So yeah, that so we all looked it up. <laughs> we all had to get the map out and try and work out. I'm sitting here thinking West Africa, where exactly would that end up? Because I keep thinking um, being in Australia, it's East Africa sort of the closest part of Africa to us. So I had to really think, okay, I know more about Southern Africa and I know about Egypt and sort of places in Northern Africa. What on earth is in West Africa? <laughs> That's what got me thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking, first I was thinking of the Nigeria region um, just because part of it was I did the, you know, DNA. I jumped on the bag wagon with everyone else and yeah. Nigeria has bunch of my makeup so I was like ooh, like what's there what can I do there um so then I was looking at um I repost um Mm -hmm. and then I I was like do I want to just like drop an island like directly below like what's in that area so that's basically how I started you know fiddling around where exactly um in the gulf I wanted it nice nice did you 
no, probably not. But I'm going to ask anyway, did you consider, um, cause like if there are Caribbean islands that are predominantly black with African influence, did you consider the Caribbean at all? Cause for a minute at the very beginning, it was like, an, until I reminded my brain, no, she said Africa. I was thinking like Haiti area. And I'm like, no, she said Africa. <laughs> yeah. I only didn't just because I was like, there are no monarchs and it just felt like it would be sure. completely fictional. Fair. Like I wanted to be fictional, but not completely. <laughs> Too Hello, it's fiction. <laughs> it's not overly fictional. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> I love that it ties in with your, with your ancestry DNA. That's fun. That's, that's a fun little insight. That's cool. Thanks. All right. Narelle, did you have more? Um, no, that was probably, it was more the setting. I just thought that was gorgeous. Loved it. Would love to go back. So that, that's not my question. No. <laughs> I enjoyed the, the seaside part there too. The, that it was an, an island because, yeah, because who doesn't like, oh, besides Beth, who doesn't <laughs> like hanging out, you know, along the ocean? I wouldn't mind the island part. I just don't want to be on the beach. That's all. <laughs> I love the fish scene in the book. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I had fun writing that. I cracked myself up. So <laughs> That's always the best writing day, right? When yeah. you amuse yourself first and then you can hope that uh, it Everyone also amuses else. those who come after. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Valerie, what's your question for Tony? Oh, I just wanted to talk about duty. Um, because that plays a really big role in the in the story. Like you say, Brielle grew up not knowing she was a princess, and then she's just an just an ordinary girl mm -hmm. going about her life, um, teaching middle grade, and relatively content with her life. She's sad that she never knew her father, but you know she's not alone in that sadly <laughs> so and then all of a sudden she finds out that she is a princess and that uh, her grandfather's dying and she's going to be queen one day why I mean you made it up so I mean the why is because you wanted it to be <laughs> but how how do we take that kind of duty like if you knew that your child was potentially a future monarch, but they didn't know it, how would you teach them to be, to want to follow a duty that they never heard of before? I guess that's where I'm trying to go. It's a great question. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because on, on, you know, when you're an author, you play like all the characters' parts. Yeah. So I definitely understood how Brielle could be upset that her mom kept her from that. But on the other hand, like, as the mom, like, how do you prepare them? Obviously, she can't escape that. Her mom knew it because she did try and prep her daughter a little bit, you know, having her do the cotillion things that would you know, naturally bring her grace and elegance. And okay. at the same time, maybe the mom hoped that giving her a regular life would take some of the pressure off. Because I think that when you're, sometimes when you're in duty and you know it's coming, you're not as appreciative of it or you take it for granted. Sure. Um, and so you're not the best you can be. That's not for everyone. You know, some people naturally step into it. Um, and I think that with someone like Brielle, just her character, she wanted to make sure that she made the right choice, which mm -hmm. is she went incognito around the island. Like, what can she learn as just a regular person that she wouldn't learn knowing if everyone knew who she was? So I'm now wondering if I actually answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> um You've, you've answered part of it for sure, I guess. Yeah, I, um, just thinking about, you know, we're, we're all moms and, and how, would, how would we look at that with our own kids if this was our secret for our children that we were holding on to? And I don't know if there is a, a good answer or a real answer to this at all, but I'd love to know, like how, Narelle, how, Beth, Tony, how would you try and prepare your kids without telling them why that they were 
See, well, so we what? Yeah. No, go ahead, Tony. <laughs> you first. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we kind of do it as believers, right? We teach our kids that we love everyone. Like that's one of the things I've taught my kids. No matter what, we love everyone. And when you say that, that doesn't mean like, oh, happy feelings. But it does mean that if you are upset with them, that you're not going to act in those feelings of anger, that you're going to take a minute, step back and see how you can respond so that you still are in that command of loving everyone. So I think that as believers, we naturally try and help our kids see a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I think that it would be the same way with duty. Like we have a duty to everybody to love them. We have a duty to everyone to treat them um, as a child of God, whether they currently believe or don't believe. It doesn't matter. Um, So I think being a Christian kind of puts a leg up a little bit. That makes sense. See, for me, I'm a big believer in not having secrets. So I would have failed in that respect. Um, And honestly, I was super mad at her mom because I don't think healthy relationships, loving relationships are based on secrets. Like that's, and I get you needed to do it for the story. So I, you know, I totally, this is one of those things where things can happen in a book that are not necessarily recommended as a way to live your life, you know, (laughs) but um, But so, yeah, for me as a mom, like, and it's especially, both of my boys were adopted and I still periodically people are like, oh, do they know they were adopted? And it's like, what kind of fool doesn't tell their kids in today's, you know, like you don't do that. I get that there used to be people who did that. I really, really hope there are not still people that do that. Um, Please don't let there be people who still do that. (laughs) But um you know, and, and so it's just this, I have a very visceral response to keeping a secret from your daughter for 20 years. Like, no, that's no, you failed as a mom, like big old F in the mom column. If you did that, especially when you did it because of like bitterness and anger. So, I mean, but I loved from a spiritual theme aspect, how you handled all of that in the book. Um, you, you did a great job with that, but I was really mad and like, and Brielle was too in the story. <laughs> yes, Let's point yes. that out. She yes. was livid with her mother for not telling her um, before. I, yeah. But I understood why her mother kept a secret. So, I mean, probably the way I looked at it and maybe it's because I've grown up in Australia, which is a constitutional monarchy and we've had a royal family at a distance on the other side of the world, is that she didn't grow up to be an entitled brat. Like she was, I mean, I really loved Brielle's heart. Like she had a really, she wasn't a selfish person. She wasn't entitled. She didn't think the world owed her everything. She didn't walk all over people and treat people badly because she had the power to do it. And her mother keeping that secret and teaching her how to be a normal person and to actually care about how your actions affect other people and to think about others, to love your neighbour as yourself, like all those basic things in a normal world meant that when she went into that royal world, she had life skills and I think was quite, was prepared to be able to make the major cultural change that she needed to make. So to me, if she, if it wasn't a secret, the story wouldn't have worked for me. So there you go. There's another perspective. (laughs) I feel like, like you can raise your child to be a decent human being. Like you look at Kate, right? Um, Kate and William, Kate, princess, yes. duchess, whatever she is. I don't follow the people. So Duchess, 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 duchess of yeah. Cambridge. Duch- yes. Okay. She like from the snapshots that I see, she is doing a, a marvelous job of raising normal people. Um in her children. And so, you know, and, and so I, like, I want to believe that it is possible to not, especially when she's not going to be there living it on the Island day to day, you know, there's no reason why it couldn't have been, this is who your father was. We're not part of that anymore. Now grow up as a normal person. But I mean, I'm not criticizing your book. I loved how you handled it. I just, for me, Valerie asked how we would do it in our personal lives. 
And in my personal life, I would not, I don't think that that was the path that I would take. So, <laughs> um, but I do, I mean, I think it made for good reading. It made for really good reading because there was and all that's of our this. job. Right. Yes, as exactly. Yes. Exactly. And it's, you know, I mean, I'm not going to end up finding out that I'm a hidden princess from a magical, are you, you know, sure? Imaginary African island anytime soon. So that, um, that would make know. her like a princess in exile, though, because I mean, Kate, I think I love Kate. So she's fabulous as far as I'm concerned. But she's also. The, the three children know who their great grandmother is. Like they, like George knows what he's yeah. in line for the throne. It's totally different. But if you're on the other side of the world in America, in a completely different culture where mm. there isn't a monarch in the US because you're a republic, I just, I just can't see how that would not cause so many problems had she known when she was younger. Like it's a very interesting question. Mm. What would have happened had her mother told her? How would that have changed things? Would she have wanted to go to Africa when she was a teenager? or or whatever and seeing a grandfather like yeah I think it would totally it'd be like that sliding doors movie do I walk through this door or that door I think it would have been a very different outcome I will say one of my friends in middle school um was an Iranian prince who had come to America it you know it fled um to America so and he was a very normal person um so I mean I think it, I don't know but <laughs> See, look at the book you wrote, Tony. So much discussion. <laughs> this is exciting. It really is. I'm just like listening to her. I'm like, yes. <laughs> but I mean, that's, accomplish. it's honestly, yeah, it's a great sign of a book, right? When it can get people talking about, you know, especially something like, because as much as this was sort of the kickoff for the plot, it's it's not a major version of the plot, really. Like it's, it's, it's the inciting incident. That's really where we're. It's really where we're stuck is on the inciting incident. So um, uh, there's so much more after that that you also really handled richly, which makes me wonder: is there more? Like you sort of set up this best friend who's moving there at the end. Slight spoiler alert: um, is uh, are there more? Are there more coming? Possibly two more. <laughs> so iris is coming her story's coming out in september yeah um, <laughs> and it's but called, she's not a princess it's called to but win I a love prince. iris to iris is prince. gorgeous iris is fabulous <laughs> okay sorry yes. tony go ahead <laughs> it's okay i said i said the title is to win a prince to win a prince okay but there well i guess there are the other kids who are potentially okay i'm like but there are no other but who's the prince <laughs> yeah Aha, okay. i guess we'll have to read it and find out excellent you know there's more islands maybe maybe there's other islands we no, don't know she said about she yet. just said we've met him so oh have to go back okay. and look mm-hmm. see who our candidates yes. are we'll have to go back and think that one through yeah and will there be a third or will it be a duology or do you not know yet because contracts are scary hard things <laughs> <laughs> um it's set up to be a duology okay perfect Excellent. That's very cool. I can see the book behind you. Do you want to grab it and hold it up closer to the camera so that everybody, I like, if you're, sure. like, it's if you're paying any attention on social media, you have seen this cover. Yes. Her dress um, but is stunning. So I gorgeous. Know, yeah. If I could find this dress and own it, I would in a heartbeat, like yeah. I don't go anywhere, yeah. but Just I could wear it around the house. totally. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> All I need is an apron from when I'm cooking. <laughs> and, the, and the neat thing you know? is, is that we know Iris and Iris designed it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, she totally could make you one. I mean, because she's real, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Very cool. Okay. So to, to win a prince. Yes. Okay. To win a prince in September. Yes. That means it's and written. It is. There will be a cover reveal on Valentine's Day. Oh, fun. That's Ooh. exciting. Okay, so just a So, couple weeks. folks, you heard it yeah. here first. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We have, we have this, we're like an investigative podcast now. We're going to solve <laughs> true crime next. No, that's not actually going to happen. But uh, <laughs> that's exciting. Super exciting. Um, the book that you wish we had mentioned that we didn't mention that you want to make sure gets mentioned? Any of you. 
<laughs> Tony's confused. Sally so looks confused too. <laughs> what, what's the question? <laughs> Did we miss anything? Like you in had, the book. What, yeah, was there anything in the book that you were like, oh, I for sure want to talk about this thing? I have what one thing. That? Okay. <laughs> I absolutely love the faith element in the story. I thought it was just so good to see it on the page. And I think so many books you'll come across that just have, have a very subtle faith element and that can be great, but it was really good to get some meat in um, your book as well. And that was something that I really appreciated was actually seeing her seeking the Lord's um, wisdom because she was going into this completely different role that, and she knew that she wasn't equipped for it and she knew that she needed help. And um, I loved how she would pray about things. Yeah. And actually yeah. the, the three of us mentioned that in, um, in a chat that we had when we were putting together our list of questions for the book is how nice it was to see such an overt faith arc and growth and yeah. just daily living yeah. um, because it was a combination. It wasn't just the growth of the faith, but like she started out with a nice strong faith that she truly lived, um, yeah. which was really lovely to see. Um, especially cause we, um, we had been sort of on the heels of an article that was talking about how Christian fiction didn't need to exist and it wasn't any different than normal. And, and then I'm like, but then there's Tony's book, which is amazing and just full yeah. of faith and you, and you couldn't pull it out. It's not like you could pull it out and have the same book. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. No, it would be book. very different without yeah. the faith element. Yes. Sure. Well done, Tony. Yes, I appreciate that. Congratulations <laughs> on the book. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, we're so excited. <laughs> Super excited. So, so um, I think any others now? Do you understand, Valerie? What I was asking was there anything else? Yeah, that was kind of the long way around, but but you got there. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if nobody else has any thoughts, Tony, tell everyone, remind everyone where we can find you. Sure. You can find me on TonyShiloh.com. Um, all my social media links are posted on there as well. Okay, great. Good job. When will, um, see, I'm not going to get it, to, to find a prince? When to will win to, a prince. Win, to win a prince, to win a prince. When will that be available for like pre-orders and stuff? Do you know? When um, with the cover reveal or after? Yes. Okay. So Valentine's Day. Yes. Wow. Oh. Exciting. We'll be watching for it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Thank you um, for, for joining us again. We always love having you. And I'm super excited that we got to have you to spotlight your book this time, not just a topic, which is yes. exciting. Thank you so much. And um, you guys, if, if you had a question for Tony, she'll check out the comments on the YouTube, right? And just I will. Pop, pop it in there. She'll, she'll find it. Um, and we'd love to hear from you and the reviews are looking great. So if you haven't already pre-ordered, um, well, you wouldn't have to pre-order it now. It came out. So, <laughs> um, in search of a prince, you want to read it, put it on your TBR and bump it up to the top. It's really a fun read. And, um, thank you for joining us at story chats. Let us know your thoughts. We'll look forward to hearing from you. You can find information about the podcast on inspiromance.com slash story chats. And um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. We'll see you again next week. And in the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>